Geologic compasses include inclinometers that allow us to use them to measure differences in elevation. Here's one example. The inclinometer on this compass is this scale here on the inside of the, the compass, right in there, wraps around like that. In order to use this scale, we need to rotate the bezel so that the east lines up with this tick mark right there and west with that tick mark. Then it's ready to use. Your compass may function somewhat differently, so you should look at the instructions on how to use the inclinometer to get it set up correctly. The way these inclinometers work is they have a little arrow inside that works like a plumb bob. So if I put this compass down on a inclined surface and I want to use the inclinometer, then I look in here and this black arrow is a plumb bob. So it's hanging vertically and it lines up with the scale on the inside of the compass right there. And that looks like about 31 degrees. So that gives us the inclination. And this is fairly straightforward to use if we just want to measure the inclination, say, of, of this surface right up here. Now, another way that we can use this compass is by pointing up to uh, up or down uh, from a shoulder height. So here we are holding out the compass at arm's length and sighting along uh, this trajectory to get the inclination of that line. And what's done then is to look through the compass. There's a little hole th right in there. And so you sight through that hole. It's the same hole that we used when we were sighting out at arm's length and looking to uh, measure the bearing. We look through that hole, we get the compass lined up, and then we read this plumb bob right here using the mirror. So it takes a little bit of practice, but you can read that. If, if you have good vision, you can read that uh, plumb bob fairly accurately, even out at arm's length. So that gives you the inclination measurement, and then to use this measurement in order to calculate the elevation difference, you do as follows. What you've just done is to, if you're sighting up to, say, the top of a tree and you want to estimate the top of that tree, you're sighting along this line and you've just measured uh, this angle here, alpha. So if we want to calculate the difference in elevations from uh, the, the elevation where we're standing, to the top of the tree, then we use this formula. We take H1, which is the height of our eye, and D, which is the distance from our position to the base of the tree. We have to measure that. We could pace it, for example. And so if we know that, then D times the tangent of alpha, D tangent of alpha would be this distance here. And if we add to that, the height of our eye right here, then we get this height here, the height or the, the height of the, the top of the tree above the ground surface where we are. And we call that the elevation difference. Now, another way to do this that doesn't require trigonometry, but it really only works as a special case, is uh, you can set the inclinometer on 45 degrees and then move around so that when you sight from, when you sight up in the air, you're, you're sighting at 45 degrees and you sight up to the point where you want to measure. And so if you do that, then you simply need to measure this distance. Um, basically what you have to do is move around. So you move in and out like that and find the location where when you sight up at 45 degrees, you are looking at the top of the tree or the position you want to measure. And so when you do that, then this distance here, D, is the same as this distance here. Uh, and so you can get the, uh, the elevation difference by taking, it's, it's just D plus H1 the height of the um, instrument above the ground surface, basically the height of your eye. 